Dear friends in Christ, we are on the third Sunday of Advent. This Sunday of the Advent is called as the Rejoicing Sunday, picking from the opening prayer of this day's liturgy. The reading of the day have the same invitation to an experience and expression of the holy joy of heaven. The first reading of today from Prophet Seraphina tells the people of God about the forgiveness that God brings to them. The prophecy is seen chronologically much before the Babylonian days of exile. Hence, the prophet has a strong message, a warning about the impending peril that will befall them. But there is also a theme of hope and joy in this prophecy. The reading of today is that part which contains this message of joy and hope. In the reading, we have the words, The Lord has removed His judgment upon you. This implies that God has been merciful, true to His very nature. Yes, when we look unto our God, this, in fact, is a great reason for us to be joyful and rejoicing. The fact that I can turn back to the experience of His forgiveness is an assurance to us. And that is the theme of Christmas, God coming down and being with us to lift us up to the joy of heaven. Come, let us move to him and experience his love and forgiveness. Sadness is when we stay on in our sins. St. Paul in the second reading to the Philippians speaks about this holy joy. He tells the Christians to be rejoicing always. Now, wait a minute. Can we be really rejoicing always? Aren't we all with burdens heavy of sorrows, sorrow of the past, future, sickness, and what not, maybe our sins? Then how can this be rejoicing always? But that is the call of the apostle. So then, what is this holy joy? Is it absence of sorrow from troubles and trials? For sure we know. We are never without it. Then the call is to find this joy in the very midst of them. And the Apostle Paul, who has been through all thick and thin, can tell us best on this. So to be joyful and rejoicing is not to await for a time when we will be without any sorrow or sadness. When we place our life and its situations against our mighty God, we can truly find this joy and be rejoicing even in our otherwise situations. Like shadows that disappear before the light of the loving mercy of God. Hence a call on us Christians is to transform our life situations to this experience. Put God first and foremost in our life's events and He will fill us with that holy joy. The Gospel of the day from St. Luke is about the preaching of John the Baptist. He is calling on the people to a renewed way of life. He calls on each, according to their profession, to live a life more pleasing to their God. Now when we look at the types of people who came to John, we can find two groups of people. One, the common people, the tax collectors and sinners. The other, the leaders of the Jews. Both listened to the hymn but responded very differently. The tax collectors and sinners came, listened to him and asked him what they need to do to be prepared to meet the Messiah. And they did so and they found their hearts really ready to welcome him when he did really come. But the other group, no. They came to question and try him. They shunned their ears to John. They then shut him in prison and silenced him. Where do I belong to? Do I listen to God's Spirit prompting me daily or do I willfully ignore it? The soldiers, the tax collectors asked John what they must do and he gave them each a call suited to their profession. Can I sit with my Lord and ask him the same? What must I do more? And he will tell me to be a better priest, to be a better dad, to be a better mom, 
to be a better husband, a better wife, and so on. We know each what the call is, where we need to apply it to. Come, let us listen to his calling. Let's make our hearts a little more prepared for the Lord to come. And that is the calling of Christmas. God bless you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.